Hey everyone, this is Evgeny and I welcome you back in Landgraf Advanced Series. So previously we checked how to build a React agent using high-level API and today we make a next step further and we're gonna check how the multi-agent system works and particularly we are working today with supervisor architecture. So join me and let's take a look at that together. This is something we are building today, so the name is multi-agent supervisor and basically it contains from several components you can see the trading agent and this one we created in the previous sessions and this time we're gonna extend it with additional functionality like we are adding a research agent which would be able to do research and provide some analysis back and based on the analysis the trading agent can put an order by order for some stocks and at the end of the day we will have the supervisor orchestrator agent and its responsibility will be to control the flow, to make a decision based on the information who should work. So it will be delegating the flow to trading agents or to research agent. And when you're constructing a system of such complexity, it makes sense to start working from a single agent. Like, for example, we do have a trading agent already from previous sessions. I'm repeating this again. And if you're missing this, please check videos from, from the past about that. But the idea would be that we start from a single agent and uh, try to enrich it with a new functionality. And at some point we would realize that it's uh, too much, uh, that it has right, too many responsibilities. So it makes sense to separate it. And that's where this multi-agent supervisor pattern comes into the play. So let's start from a single agent. And here I copied already the one we had. So we have here several tools. It's a lookup stock symbol. We have fetch stock data and we have, uh, we have the place order tool. And the basic idea of this agent that it knows how to buy stocks. So let me compile it. And we can ask questions, uh, the ones that it can process like buy uh, Tesla stocks at current price. And just to repeat what we had previously. And here we are, what's happening here, we are converting Tesla to the ticker name, we are grabbing all the financial data for Tesla, and then we are placing an order for that. So the proper, uh, proper price of single Tesla stock is extracted from the financial data, then we have another tool called for placing an order, so we have 1003 we can buy because of the price. Then order was placed, this is the result of our tool, and basically the AI responded back that the order was fulfilled. And if you want this agent to do a bit more, then we can extend the number of tools it has, right? So here we are adding a research part, and uh, basically we have to change the system message because it's not only about buying stocks, it's about researching as well. And we add in two tools, so it's a web search, and this one is from, I'm not going to look into the details, this one is from Long Graph Introduction series, you can check it on the internet as well, on our channel. And another one is wiki search. And basically the idea is that the agent will be able to do the broad web searches for searching list of companies, for example, and uh, perform some specific searches in the Wikipedia, so it's more about uh, concepts, about the company, maybe details or something, right? So what's happening next, we are creating again agent, we have uh, the two research tools and we are keeping the three for buying the stocks. And then we have agent with, which is kind of capable of doing a research and doing a buying stocks thing and it can do the both at the same time, right? And we can give it a try as well. So our request would be, I'm thinking of investing in electric vehicles industry and uh, find promising companies and uh, explain me why they're good for me. So I'm running it. And here we are, what do we have here? I'll take a look at that. Uh, first was a web search request and the query was promising electric vehicle companies 2023, which is totally wrong because now we have 2025. But nevertheless, we do have back a search result. And then the agent decided it found this uh, ribbon, probably from the articles, and it decided to look up for a stock symbol for the company and found it. And then it fetched stock data for this one, that one, and that one. And I'm not sure about uh, the tickers for this too. Maybe they were in the results or something. So it fetched some financial data for three of the companies, probably. 
And this is interesting. And okay, another one and another one. So it fetched a lot of data from the internet. But again, this was 2023 and it's totally wrong, I would say, right? So look at that. It analyzed uh, a lot of companies and it found three promising, this, this and that. And based on the budget, it provided some recommendations. Problem number one, we saw it's 2023 and we can fix it in several ways. And the easy one would be to inject the string that contained the current date and here what I did. So we're grabbing the current date and we're saying a system message. So we're providing two, the reality. We're providing a system message with today's date and the human's request. And this time we're trying for energy sector and we are asking for really buying the thing. And let's take a look if it works. And here we are. Please ignore all these delisted symbols. They are technical ones. They are unrelated to what we are looking at today. So what we have, we have a today's date and it's 2025, it's August, that's fine. And the user requests about investing, then we have a tool call. And this time, look at that, we have promising companies in 2025, which is something we really wanted. We do have back some web research results. And then again, look up stock symbol for next era energy and something else, something else. And now we are placing order for a company. I have no idea what's that, but it was placed successfully. It was filled kind of. And we have back in the AI matches message saying that, okay, I have chosen G Vernova and as most promising company. And uh, okay, I bought already one share for you at the limit price of this one. Have you noticed the problem with this approach? It's kind of a very chaotic, right? We never had a chance to look about uh, more information about the company in the conversation. It wasn't clear like uh, the AI silently pick several companies. It made several requests for fetching data. Uh, we never saw the the kind of decision why it was made, and it was it it went through directly to the buying thing, and then you have it without even knowing why it was good for you, right? Uh, the point here I wanted to highlight is that it's very chaotic because we have several responsibilities in this uh, single agent. Like uh, it's responsible for doing the research. Mm, there is no clear boundaries to report as the result of this research. Then we have the second agent, which kind of second responsibility that's kind of responsible for buying stocks. And this one also, it's not clear how it works. Like it's really messy, right? Just uh, imagine you creating the app which works this way. And um, well, one way of fixing that would be to fix the system message. But the more responsibilities, the more tools you add into your agent, the more complex it would be that, and the more unpredictable the behavior your agent will have, right? And to solve that, you uh, can do the other way. You can start extracting the responsibilities into the several agents, and that's where this supervisor pattern comes into the play. So what we are doing, first we are defining our research agent and here the really beautiful part of that, we can define the proper system message and we can define that the expected result from this agent is really explaining us something and providing the company name, so why it's good, for example. And the same, we have two tools, I left it here, it's a web search and this is a wiki search if it wants to do some wiki search as well. And here we have two tools. Look at that. And uh, to distinguish between two objects, uh, two agents, we define the name research agent, and then we compile it. And the second one is trading agent. And here we have three functions. So lookup symbol, uh, we have fetch stock data, and we have place a bind order. I just copy pasted it. And again, we have our pretty well defined trading system message, which defines exactly specific responsibility of this smaller agent. And the same, it's pretty simple. We define a new name for the agent. We provide in the three tools that we saw already and compiling it. And this is the second agent. And then we're creating our supervisor. And this time, look at that. It's interesting because this is the way how we're solving the current date. We are defining a new tool, which has a current timestamp. And in the supervisor message, we are defining what's the responsibility of this agent. So it's about coordinating two different agents, so research and trading agents. And uh, we are saying that you have to provide the now context, kind of, or uh, we are interested in the results for the specific date. And so we are providing some basic rules, like about routing, about handoffs, so when you can 
pass the control from one agent to another one, etc., etc., etc. And for creating a supervisor array using high-level API, it's a create supervisor function. And here, again, this is another agent, right? But it's a bit special. So we're defining the agents that are under the control of this guy. And this is research agent and the trading agent. Then we're defining the tool because the supervisor has to provide the current date. Uh, the model, the system message, and this one is interesting because uh, output model, I mean, when you look at the list of messages, you have two options. Either you can see the result of working every specific agent, or you can look through the whole system, for, through the whole history of messages, right? Like what's happening uh, the way the other agent, for example, or trading agent was communicating with user. And if you set it to full history, then you can see everything. So this is something we are doing. Like by default, you see only um, the output of each agent and we are interested in the details and i'm compiling this as well and here how it looks like look at that we have a supervisor we have research agent and trading agent and uh, that's it right and i'm intentionally skipping here all human in the loops like for example in the previous session we had one for trading agent but now for this first lesson i don't want to over complicate the things so we are pretending that we don't need it we will take a look at that later and if you want to see some details, you can maybe extend the view and see like how it looks like. So you see inside we have this classical React agent with agent tools and the same for research agent, the same for trading agent. And let's give it a try. We're asking again, we have 1000 and we want to invest it in the promising companies in the AI sector. And uh, let's, well, we're asking practically to do the research and then place the order for the best candidate. And let's take a look at logs. So the first was human request about investing and then uh, the supervisor. And here we have the name. So it's clear what's happening and who is initiator of the message. It performed a tool call for get current timestamp. And based on that, uh, the supervisor start the conversation and says, okay, this is a system context for now and you have to stick to it. And I'll first research the most promising companies in the AI sector and then place a buying order for you. And uh, then it's interesting because there is a tool call and this is what handoff. So the way how the agents passing the control is using tools with specific names. So here uh, the supervisor made a tool call for transfer to research agent. And the result we can see that, okay, the successfully, the flow was successfully transferred to research agent. And now in the scope of research agent and we see it by the name here. There is a tool called for web search and it's top AI companies 2025 because the current date is clear from the context already. Then we have the results from web research and then research agent decided, okay, I want to see some details about NVIDIA and this is from Wiki. And then we have another tool called for Wiki search and uh, some data as well, right? And then look at that. As a final note, the research agent reported the result. Like based on the recent analysis, NVIDIA is my recommendation. So choosing companies NVIDIA, and this is based on the research agent system message. And then look at that. Research agent makes another tool call, and this is transferred back to supervisor. And it was successfully transferred back to supervisor. So the control flow went back to supervisor. And this time supervisor decided, okay, I know the recommendation. And this time I want to invest in NVIDIA. And what it does for that, okay, it transfers to trading agent this time. It's another tool call. And it asks for buying the company NVIDIA having a budget of 1000. And the flow went to uh, successfully transfer to trading agent. And trading agent starts its own business, right? It looked up for stock symbol for NVIDIA. Uh, kind of was already stock symbol, right? Or maybe no. No, it's company name. And the stock symbol was NVDA. And then it uh, fetched all the financial data for the company, right? And then it placed a buying order for another tool call. So NVIDIA buy five uh, stocks and limit price this one. The order was filled and uh, the trading agent said, reported, okay, I successfully placed and here's the summary. And uh, basically the job is finished here and then the trading agent passes back the control to the supervisor here. So we have another, another tool call for uh, transferring back to supervisor and then the transfer successfully finished. And the last message, we have a supervisor reporting back to the user that uh, you invested is complete. I have successfully purchased five shares of NVIDIA. 
But this is basically how it works and the most interesting thing you should learn about here is about trade-offs and this, uh, the, the way how the control flow goes from agent to agent. And for that uh, it uses the tool calling, like you see a lot of this. We don't have it in our diagram, we never define it, but it's there, it's uh, for, for you created on the background. All right, that's it for today. We checked together how multi-agent system works. We did our first step in this direction. And next time we will check how to introduce more complex uh, ideas on the top. Like we will take a look at human in the loop, for example. And it was me, Evgeny. Thanks a lot that you stick with me till the end. I really, really, really appreciate it. And I will see you next time in the next video in this series, Langrap Introduced. See you and bye-bye.